What's up guys? I'm so excited because Curse of the Frozen Casket is finally out. This set has been like an in anticipation by everyone for so long because it's kind of going back to the roots of what made the game so great. I'm really really excited for the five starter deck rulers that also come with um, the, the starter decks but you can pull the ubers in here and then um, the five rulers that actually come in the set. So we have 10 new rulers. They're all actually like really good in terms of like playability. Like even the ones that don't seem as strong I could totally see myself making like a really good deck with them and being able to like compete at locals and whatnot. So I'm really excited for just having so much card pool to be able to play with again. Um, there's also like exclusive cards in all of the starter decks. so. It's like really cool to be able to like, like the direction of the game was kind of like new players are always behind or old players like me never had like anything interesting on the side. But now with the new starter decks, it's like anyone getting into the game with those kind of catches up to pace with anyone like me who's going to be using those cards too. So instead of like me anticipating new stuff, but the old people like buying old starter decks to play with, everyone just kind of starts off at the same place. So that's really, really cool. But um, I'm going to get this box cracked open uh, for anyone who hasn't been on the channel for box openings before. I don't typically <clears throat> go really slow or anything to show off a lot of the cards. I kind of just talk about some important cards uh, in the set while I just uh, speed through the box opening. Just because it's a little easier to watch that way and it doesn't feel so much like every single common is being shown. Uh, I'll try to have the... the this box is beautiful by the way, but I'll try to have the description for like the wiki or whatever that has the card list in the description so you guys can see. But um, this box is just like absolutely beautiful. They always go like super out of their way to make sure that the boxes are just like, and it even says lapis cluster so it's kind of easy to follow with, but they, they make sure that uh, their boxes are like up to par. Let's see which box topper we get. Oh, there's Yogg. So, Yogg is the box topper, which is really cool. Um, I'm, I was not a fan of him, but I've been kind of thinking of some like really interesting ways to use him. So I'm thinking maybe I'll try to like squeeze those in there or something, but uh, it's a little hard to see. But Yogg is really, really cool. And then they added this like really cool addition, which is like this like little comic book that has like, this is the sleeves you get by the way, like this art is on the sleeves if you buy the five starter decks. But um, they kind of added like this like almost like comic skit. That shows up all of the like really important characters um, that are enforceable, which is really cool because a lot of times when people come to like core and ask me about like the game, uh, they don't realize like how much lore and stuff there is to it. And I'm always really excited to like share that with them. So it's kind of cool that they give you like a base of like, you know, which characters are really important and like, uh, you know, what, what characters are going to be in this cluster. So it just seems really, really interesting. There's even like a little fairy over here. Maybe we'll get her. I don't know if you guys can see her, but... Um, yeah, this is like a really cool addition. I'm really glad I threw something like that in there. But um, <clears throat> I'm also going to be clearing my throat like infinite times just because I'm really, really sick at the moment. Um, another addition is that the holo card is always on the front. So it makes you think every pack is a god pack, which is like super, super frustrating at times because you get so excited and then you're just like, oh no, wait. But um, this, this card, uh, I'm going to start. I'm so glad I pulled this first because I've been wanting to talk about this card. I think this card is like possibly like the best card in the entire set. Maybe not the best. That's probably glorious. But uh, this card is definitely going to define like all of what the vampire deck does. A lot of people have been like sleeping on it because it's a fairy tale and they've been trying to play all vampires for whatever reason. But this card is by far the best card. Just being able to tag something for 100 damage with the dark vampire and then just summon this and kill it is just insane. And um, it's just gonna be like really, really good. So the foiling also for anyone that hasn't noticed is like a little different. It's not like, it doesn't have like the parallel lines in it like it used to. Um, I don't really like have much to say on it. It's not. It's not a huge difference to me, but I do prefer the parallel wear. I do like the attack and defense on the side, though. And then, of course, a lot of people have been talking about the text box. Uh, it's a bummer that the full arts still have them. Uh, if you notice on, like, let's say, TCG Player or on Core TCG website, for the singles now, we have them listed as textured foil instead of full art because that's just kind of what they are now. They, they don't technically count as full art because they're not. So, uh, safeguard, it's kind of like Blessed Holy Wolf. It's also a really good card. I like this card a lot. Uh, Charlotte's Protector I like a lot, but specifically, of course, only in Charlotte. Uh, a new changes to additions and how like they now have Bestow. Uh, I've spoken about those in the past too. And then there is Priest of Darkness. Um, we don't have any like really insane targets for this just yet. Uh, a lot of people are excited for Azathoth, but I'm not too crazy about that card. I don't think it's like that great. But uh, Servant of Mikage, nice little butler with his little wine. Uh, fairy, some dragons. Uh, this card was really weird too because it's just like a vanilla. I mean, I guess the stats are good, but I'd much rather have something that like has an effect. 
But um, Captain Hook, oh, there's so much talk about Captain Hook. Captain Hook is going to be, oh, that's a pretty good pack. I, I like these. Uh, Captain Hook is going to be really, really important this meta. I do agree that like, oh, I mean, I shouldn't say agree because I actually disagree. But um, I think for five, it's really, really expensive. I wouldn't just throw him in a blue deck and summon him for five. I feel like it's going to be really slow for how good everything we have now is. But there is like ways to cheat him in like with either mana dorks or cards like Dance of the, uh, Dance, I think it's Dance of Shadows, uh, the revive spell that we have. Uh, that spell is like, uh, you can just discard him with Charlotte and then revive him later, and it has Remnant, so that's pretty cool too. But uh, I think he's definitely going to be really, really good. It's just, uh, I don't think it's going to be worth hard casting for five all the time. And then the new Blazer replacement we have, uh, this is the only card that removes everything from the game. Uh, Fire Magic Stone, and then Heavenly Gust. Uh, this card I've also spoken about in one of my videos. It's like the new, <clears throat> excuse me, it's one, it's one of the new addition in Regalia Hate. Uh, this card is also going to be insanely played. I'm pretty sure it's going to be in every green deck side deck. Or if you splash me, they're going to try to play that as well. Just because it's so good. But um, it's one of the, the cards I'm actually like most excited to use. And then summon from Memoria. Some more. This bear is like the worst. He's a 12-12 bear that does nothing. It's just, I hate this bear. He's just so bad. Uh, Creature of Chaos. This is like one of the, a lot of people like this card a lot. I, I've seen a lot of people pre-order them so far. But uh Another Pandora, uh, more alternative art stones. Did I already pull one of those? Yeah, so you can get a foil and a regular of a card in the pack. And then, yeah, the alternative art stones are really, really cool. I think these are all going for like anywhere from like $1 to $3. So they kind of still retain their value, which is really interesting because like the Vingal stones are lower. But um, I'm not sure if they're going to stay like that, but uh, they're really easy to pull. So like if, you, if people do buy boxes, you kind of get a lot of them. Uh, I'm pretty sure you get at least like one of each. I think they kind of went for that, but I'm not 100% sure. I haven't been really paying attention. Oh, uh, see, this is another one. It's a foil version. Oh, wait. Okay, so this is, see, this is the difference. So I really, really hope I can catch this because it's important. <clears throat> but if you guys see that like texture to it, it's not just like foiled. It kind of has like these like, there you go. You can kind of see it at this angle. So this is what the new full art is just in this set. You can kind of see those like little lines and stuff. Uh, so this would still be considered max rarity, even though it has like the little text box. I don't want anyone to get confused, especially like because uh, I work at a card shop. It's going to be like, uh, I'm going to be sending out people those cards and they buy it. And they're going to be like, oh, it's not full art. And I'm going to go, no, that is the full art. So uh, hopefully nobody gets confused with that. But uh, those are what the new, in this set anyway, they've said that I think it's going to go back to being full arts in the next set. But it's not a big deal. I mean, the game looks really fun right now. I think everyone should just focus on how great uh, the new cards are going to be. And another one, oh see this one I believe is texture too, yeah, so let me try to get this zoomed in. You can see it kind of like all along, it has like this like nice box texture to it, it's not just foil, there you go. You can see it at that angle really well. And then there was also uh, Peter Pan, which is also a really really good card, I think Peter Pan's going to be great too. Definitely from Oliven being able to just summon Wendy is really really strong. And then Resonance, some more Cthulhu cards, uh, Little Were Rabbit. Uh, automotive. Oh, there's another one with two in one pack. Uh, that card actually, like, it, it doesn't seem good by any means, but I feel like you could probably mess around with it. You can, like, discard Necromancy with, uh, Charlotte, and then summon her and equip it, and she would gain, like, double the buff, which is kind of interesting. Uh, the new, like, kind of Scorn of Dark Alice, this card's really good, too. I think this card's gonna be played a lot as well. Uh, it kind of depends on how many spells people run, because monsters are always so much better, but... Uh, I definitely think it's going to be good. And then see, just a regular foil for the Scorch Bills. There's no texture to it, so that's just the foil version. And then Melfi, which is like one of the best cards in the set. She's just incredible. I think Melfi's insane. Being able, She's pretty much just a two-drop feasting with a little bit of a nerfed enter effect, but definitely like ten times worth the having it for two drops. So uh, I think that's definitely going to be one of the best cards in the set. Uh, as a thought, so this is the card I was talking about, and then just another regular foil. Uh, this is kind of the only big target for Abdul, but like it doesn't protect, it only protects destruction, but there's so much removal nowadays, especially with like Zero's Magic, which I still haven't pulled, interestingly enough. But uh, I think like, yeah, with, with something that's that easy to remove, I, I don't think it's worth playing around. And then th there's another one. This is another textured foil. So if you guys can see at that angle, it has a really nice texture to it. Um, this card I think is actually really underrated. Um, of course, Mercury is like the only one that could use it, but I think that card is absolutely insane. 
being able to just drop like three captain hooks against like a special stone deck is just game and like even if like that's situationary because like you're not going to always have them like you she plays like ice dragon she plays captain hook she can just have anything she could just drop like random big stuff and it's just like you're not always going to be able to respond and she does it for like so little so i think mercury is actually really underestimated she seems like she's going to be uh not like maybe like tier one meta that that might be even possible too but she definitely seems really 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 good uh, I might mess around with that deck as well. I just like decks that like cheat in stuff uh, for less. Another one of the textured foils, so different from the other Pandora, you can see. Uh, it's kind of hard to see also because the lighting is pretty bad. It's kind of like gloomy here in LA, but um, in real life, the, under like really good lighting and stuff in a sleeve, they actually look really nice. Uh, I was like not a fan at first, but then see that there's another one. But um, they're kind of slowly starting to win me over, so I'm really glad about that. And then some more Morris's cards. I'm gonna try to speed it up a bit now. Invitation. Oh, there's another full art. Well, textured foil, I should say. I wonder if like you know, there's more of them now, or if I'm just getting lucky and pulling them all early. It's kind of interesting. Uh, Glorious, uh, possibly the best card in the entire set. This card is going to be played in every single light deck from now until it gets rotated. This card is just absolutely insane. Being able to kill something that does damage is like, you just summon it during the end phase and pretty much kill anything that did anything. It's, it's insane. And I just, I can't see people not playing that card in light. You might not be able to splash light for it as easily, but, oh, there's another, uh, Zero's, I mean, the first Zero's Magic, this card is really, really good. I think I bent the corner of my Lumia. I'm kind of sad about that. Actually, no, it looks fine. Cool. Uh, is it textured foil? Oh, it's not. It's just foil anyway. But, um, yeah. Uh, Zero's Magic is going to be one of the best cards. It's just so, so, so good. To be able to remove anything for one is just absolutely ridiculous. There's no reason of why. Like, even if you don't play Zero and you play, like, Light, it's... Oh, 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 my God. There it is. I got another God Pack. This is awesome. This is the second God Pack I've got. Um, I can't tell. If, okay, so this is a foil God Pack. It's not the textured foil one, but it's the foil super rares, I guess. So there's Azatot, Demon, Glorious, Red Riding Hood. These also actually look really, really nice, though. Like, the foil versions of the supers, like, have so much color in them compared to the other stuff. Uh, Lumia, Rinka, Fire Chariot, Red Boy, Eternal Boy, Melfi, and Cheshire. And the Cheshire, too. I haven't pulled one of these yet, but this is awesome. This is so, so, so awesome. I wasn't expecting to get another one. Uh, I've had one in one of my videos before. I won't say which one, so just in case you guys watch the older ones, it won't be a spoiler, but this is awesome. I, I, I never really get got back, so that was really cool. Actually, I want to, like, I want to put this over here. I'm, like, the only person for some reason that never, like, puts their cards in the middle where people can see. Because I guess I'm like a terrible YouTuber and don't really know what I'm doing. But um, this is awesome. I, I really, really, I'm really happy now. I got a got pack. <laughs> Let me see. I, I want to make it look at least remotely decent. My OCD is like taking in. All right. That should be good. You guys can see that. That's pretty cool. And then, uh, but yeah. So a lot of these cards, like the super rares in this set are actually all playable, which is really cool. Um, like most of those cards are actually really, really good. So getting a got pack is awesome. And then I've also seen a... Another Azatot. This one's also just foil. Um, I've also seen somebody get a, uh, like a textured foil, like God Pack of stones. So you get one of every stone, and they all have uh, the textured foiling on them, which is like really, really crazy. I think that's just like the best pack you can get, other than an Uber, of course. But like getting, they're all like five to six dollars. So getting ten of those, it's like it's like a fifty dollar to sixty dollar pack. Like that's crazy. And then foil nameless mist. Another Captain Hook, uh, this little city, and a hearts core. It's not a bad pack either. But that's what I'm saying. Like in Force of Will, a lot of people don't also notice that like if there isn't like huge money cards other than like the God packs and the Ubers and stuff. But like even like every pack almost just like pays for itself. Like is this a no? It's not a textured foil. But like a textured foil Wendy is like I think four dollars, and this is I think one dollar. It's like that's a five dollar pack. It might not be like you know twenty or thirty, but. Like, every pack kind of pays for itself, so you never feel like you're, like, not really getting your money's worth or whatnot. Which is just really nice. I, I, I like the aspect of that. There was the fairy tale edition in there that says, you call a race and everything in swiftness. Uh, a lot of people are hyped about that card, but I don't actually feel too, like, crazy about it. I just hate setup cards. They just never really work for me. Like, I'd rather just play something that has swiftness like a Lancelot than 
pay two red to give everything else swiftness. It just doesn't really seem that good. A uh, little red writing. See these? I mean, like the supers, even the non-foil ones, they just look so cool. Like the color in them is just beautiful. But man, I'm so so happy I pulled the god pack. That was awesome. Uh, guide, cloning magic, uh, eternal rest, another Lumia, just non-foil and a foil water stone. And this Cheshire I think is gonna be really good in um in Mercury's deck too. Uh, I have, kind of have some ideas. I'll explain more of those like when I actually make deck profiles, which should be coming. Uh, really soon. I like this guy too. He's like the coolest looking guy. And this guy's just cool looking. But um, yeah, I'm really, I'm, I can't tell if I want to do box openings for all the starter decks next week or just jump into deck profiles. I might uh, do the starter deck openings like Monday through Friday just to kind of show them off because I know there's a lot of new people that watch these and I really want them to understand how good of a value buying either like boxes or the starter decks are. They're just really, really, really good and uh, I like showing them off. I don't want someone to not know like what they're getting themselves into and you know, if I have to go out of my way to do it, then of course I'll do it, because I love you guys. But, um, yeah, I'm really excited for the starter decks. Um, I personally can't wait to get my own set, too. Oh, another, oh, this is my first ruler, actually. I just noticed, I haven't gotten any rulers, and it's a full art Mars. Well, textured full art Mars, I should say. Uh, this is actually one of my favorite rulers. I think he's really cool. It's, it's one of my favorite because I know how hard it's going to be to, like, think of a really good way to use it. But, um... I really, really can't wait. I want to be able to think of like some kind of crazy idea in where it's not just like burn, 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 I win. So I'm trying to think of something interesting, but uh, it's probably going to be one of the later deck profiles I do just because uh, I have some other ones kind of figured out already. Oh, this is beautiful. A textured foil Melfi. I want to get the focus plate on this. There you go. Oh, that looks so nice. That looks really, really, really nice. I can't wait to have like play sets of these. They're just really, really, really nice. But um, I wonder what my last ruler is going to be. Maybe I'll get like a zero. I really want to play zero too. She's so good. It's like pre-release was just like zero, 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 zero. And like I didn't even blame anyone. It didn't feel as annoying as Reflect either. And it was just like the best thing ever. Oh, there's a textured foil drink. Like, so I've gotten like I think a uh, foil, non-foil, and a textured foil, which is awesome. She's really cool too. And then another Zero's Magic. Zero's Magic textured foil looks really nice too. So I think there's two packs left, and so I, I should be getting another ruler. Maybe it'll be Yogg, that'll kind of fit with the box topper, that'd be really cool. But, um, let me see. Oh, it is Yogg, okay, that was cool, <laughs> I literally just called it. Um, so yeah, Yogg and Mars were the two rulers in the box. Um, oh, I, I guess, oh no, yeah, yeah, there's only five rulers in the box, there isn't ten. I was gonna say, normally you get four in the first set, but, um, it's because there's only five in the set. So, Mars and Yogg, pretty cool. And then last pack, uh, we can't hope for another god pack unless it's like a mistake. That would be really, really, really cool. Like an uber imagine if I just like uh, have like a lucky box or something. But um, that would, that's really cool. So glorious, Mad Oni, Melt to Nothing, Elf, Dream, uh, is it Dream of, oh, I thought it was Dream of Juliet. I was like, did they just literally just name it the same thing but change it? Uh, Zero's Familiar, everyone has to love this guy. I, I didn't like set one aside. This is literally the greatest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Like in every single, like if I have this on the field and my opponent plays like a like a Soul Hunt or something, this is literally my reaction. Like really? Really? You just played Soul Hunt? Like did you just play Soul Hunt? <laughs> this card is the greatest card. I literally am in love with this card. I want to play like four in every deck. Like I, I don't even know if it's like going to be that meta, but like I just really like this card. This card I'm obsessed with too. Uh, being able to make everything into a 4-4 four, four bear is crazy. I want to play like Arlo with this and then just go 4-4 four, four bear shoot with Artemis like when they attack and it would just kill everything. Like that's like the coolest concept ever. And another Heavenly Gust of course, a Magic Stone of Dark Depth, and a uh, Shaung Jing. I don't know how to pronounce anything because I'm not really good at reading, but um, another one of the uncommons that go in that deck. So I, I think I can't tell how to play this deck either. I don't really have a lot of ideas, but I'll have to kind of like sit down and like review everything. But um, so God Pack and two rulers. Uh, this was the box. If you guys do have any questions, you're new to the game and kind of want to get any like advice or anything, please let me know in the comments below because I do like helping out the most I can. Uh, if you do want to see the starter deck openings or you want me to go straight into deck profiles, kind of leave a comment on that too just so I know kind of where to stand. And um, if you guys haven't subscribed yet, please do because the videos come straight to you. It just makes it so much easier and I'll definitely catch you guys next time. I hope you enjoyed the video.